Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're creating a calendar inside of our Django and React application and we're doing that by using full calendar. This is not the first video in this series, we've already done three before in which I covered an introduction and a basic setup of full calendar. We displayed and showed the different views that full calendar have and how we can use buttons to change views in our application. And I showed you how we can display our database data from our Django backend on our calendar on our React.js frontend. In this video, we're going to continue and we're going to make sure that we can change the colors of the events in our full calendar. And in the end, I want to make sure that events with different statuses are being displayed in different colors. Now, to do that, we're going to be following five steps. First, I'm going to show you how we can change the color of all of the events on our calendar. Next, we're going to be changing the colors of our events based on our data. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a status field to our API so that we know what we want to use to determine the color of our events. Then we're going to set that status as the class name inside of our full calendar so that the status is reflected in the code in the front end. And then we're going to use CSS to set the color of events based on the data. And in the end, it will look something like this. And you can see that inside of my front end code, I have duplicated the results of our previous video into my calendar four and into calendar four. So we'll be using that as a start point for today. Now, the first step is all about changing the colors of all of the events on our calendar. And if we go to the current way that our calendar is set up, you can see that all of our appointments are in this blue color. And if we go to the full calendar documentation, we can see that we can change the background colors of our events by using a parameter called event background color. And we can use this to use different CSS color formats uh, to change the actual color of the bars. And one example that they give is that we can type in red and our bars should all become red. So let's test that out. So I'm going to copy over the name of this parameter and inside of my calendar four, where I actually have the full calendar instance, I'm going to put the parameter of event background color and I'm going to set that equal to, then I do some square brackets and in there I say that I want it to be red. And if I now go back to our front end, you can indeed see that all of our appointments have this red color. So this is working exactly the way that we would expect. Now, this will also work with color codes. So if I look up the color code for purple, which is this one right here, I can also copy over this hex code and put it inside of this right here. And that should also make sure that our events change of color. And you can now see that all of my events are actually appearing as purple. Now, this is all very nice, but um, maybe the users want to see different colors for the events based on what they represent. Uh, so we need to make sure that we can actually change the colors based on the data behind these appointments. Now, the first thing that we then need is actually identify what can we use to determine the color. Well, in our previous video, we have identified the data that we're currently bringing to the front end, which is the ID, the start, the end, and the title. However, if we go to our admin portal and we go to our appointments model, you will see that all of the appointments that I've created so far also have a status. And based on this status, we can determine what color an event should be. So the first step that we now need to take is we need to make sure that the status data is actually being added to our API. And for that, we can go to our backend and we can go to our serializer because in here we have defined the fields that we want to bring to the front end. And in here, we can simply add the status. And just like that, this field will now be added to our API. And if we take a look at the data that is now being logged in our console, you can see that we have these statuses of open, in progress, again open and completed. So that data is now there. Now the question is, how are we actually going to change these colors uh, based on the status? Well, the way to do that can actually be found in the event object. 
in the full calendar documentation. And this page describes all of the different props that we can give our events. And one of them that you can see down here is class names. And class names make sure that a certain part of your data will appear as the class name in HTML. And that actually means that if the name is in HTML, we can use CSS to determine the color based on the status. So what we need to do now is make sure that inside of the events, we have a field called class names where this status is going to appear. And to do that, we can go back to our backend code. And we now just need to make one simple change, and that is making sure that the field does not appear as status, but as class names inside of our API. And we can do the same thing what we did in our previous video. We can simply say that this field right here is called class names. And in here, we say serializers.carfield. And then we say that source is going to be equal to status. And we bring this class names field to our frontend. And now when we reload our frontend, we should see the status being named in the classes. And if we now do inspect, and we're going to go to our console, you see that the field is now being named class names. And this means that this field should now also appear in the actual class name of all of our events. So if we click this arrow thing right here and we select our appointment, it will go to the actual element of the appointment. And if we then go a little bit up top right here in this A tag, you can see that it mentions the word open, which is the status of this event. And the same thing goes if we select something again and we go to the appointment four, you can here again see in the A class that completed is being mentioned in the class name. So this means that we can now use this to actually change the color. And to do that, we can use CSS. If we go to our front end, you can see that we have a file called app.css in here. And in here, we can write the logic for actually making sure that a certain class name appears as a certain color. Now, what we saw in here is that the class name is actually being mentioned inside of the A tag and it's being called completed, open, and in progress. So if I want to make sure that all of the completed appointments are going to be showing up in green, I can do a.completed, and then do some squarely brackets in here. And if I highlight this, you can see that this refers to a class name of completed inside of A. And actually, let's make sure that this is a capital. So it also reflects that right there. And what we can do now is set the background color equal to green. And let's save this now. And then the last thing that we also need to do is we need to make sure that our app.css file is actually being applied on our calendar form. And to do that, we can go to calendar form and we can do import and then do a dot dot and then a slash. And then we're going to do app. CSS. And this makes sure that the CSS is being applied on this file. So now let's go back to our front end and hopefully the color has changed. And we actually need to make a small change as well because for this to actually work, we do need to make sure that the event background color right here is not being used anymore. So I'm just going to comment out this event background color so that we can use CSS to actually determine the color of our events. And if we now go back to our front end, you can see that our appointment four does now appear as green, while the other events are blue again. So this seems to be working just fine. Now we can also do this for the other statuses that we have inside of our data. And those statuses are in progress and also open. So if we go back to our app.css file, I can copy over this statement right here. And I can say that I also want to change something for a.open. And let's actually make sure that everything that is open is going to appear in red because this has a lot of urgency and we need to fix it. Then we can also say that we have something called a dot in progress. But this will actually not really work like this. So I'm just going to mention the word progress. And let's make sure that test one is actually orange. And now let's see if it is being applied in the correct way. 
And we can now see in our front end that appointment 3, which status open, has been turned into red and our appointment 4 is in green. And if we go back to April, you can see that my in progress event is actually orange at the moment. So this is working just the way that I expected. And what you will notice right now in our events is that around the red and the green background, you can still see a blue outline. Uh, and actually we can also change the way that that is going to look. And to change that, we can put in a simple command in CSS. We can say, for example, for completed, that the border needs to be two pixels of solid dark green. And let's save this. And when we now go to our front end, you will notice that we have a dark green border in our event opposed to the blue one that is still in the red one. So we can also do this for the other events inside of our code. So we can say for open that is going to be dark red. And for in progress, we can say that it's equal to orange. And let's make it really orange like this. And let's also close these off with a colon in the end. And if we now go to our front end, you can indeed see that we have now a nice border around all of our events, uh, making sure that the blue is not there. And that is how you can quite easily manipulate the way that your events look based on a label inside of your data. And that is actually all for today. In the next video, we're going to continue and we're going to see how we can filter the data from our calendar so that we can filter on certain statuses or date ranges and make sure that it works appropriately with the calendar. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.